the flower market. The stands along this busy block sell cut flowers, plants, bulbs, seeds, and garden supplies. Browse your way slowly, headed along the single canal to the end of the block. This market, the Blumenmarkt, is a testament to Holland's longtime love affair with flowers. The Netherlands is by far the largest flower exporter in all of Europe and a major flower power worldwide. If you're looking for a souvenir, there's a huge selection here. Certain seeds are marked as okay to bring back into the United States through customs. And how about that marijuana starter kit in a can? It's affordable, portable, and... Um, probably not. Okay, tulips then. The best-known Dutch flower is the tulip. They're actually native to Central Asia. The name comes from the flower's hat-like appearance. Tulip. It's from the Turkish word for turban. In the 1500s, a few tulip bulbs found their way from Asia all the way to Holland. The hardy bulbs thrived in the sandy soil of Holland's reclaimed land and thus began one of the oddest chapters in Dutch history. It was the Golden Age, and merchants had money to burn. They loved buying flowers for their homes. Within a generation, tulips grew from a trendy fad into an all-out frenzy. Prices shot way up. In fact, a single-prized bulb could sell for the equivalent of thousands of dollars. Speculators jumped in, too, and Amsterdam's stock exchange hummed with frantic businessmen trading tulip futures. By 1637, it was full-blown tulip mania. Yes, that's what even the Dutch called it. Then the tulip bubble burst. Overnight, once wealthy investors were left with nothing but worthless pieces of paper or warehouses full of bulbs nobody wanted. The crash was devastating, even playing a role in the decline of the Golden Age. But Holland's love affair of this delightful flower lives on. Today, tulips are a major industry and are firmly planted in the Dutch psyche. The Amstelkring Museum also known as the Church of Our Lord in the Attic. With its triangular gable, this building looks like just another townhouse. But inside, it holds a secret, a small, lavishly decorated place of worship, hidden in the attic. Back in the 16th century, some Amsterdamers had to meet here, unable to practice their faith in the open. Although Amsterdam has long been known for tolerating prostitutes and drug users, back then there was one group they kept in the closet— Catholics. The anti-Catholic laws were imposed by Protestants during the religious wars of the 1500s. In medieval times, Amsterdam, like all of Europe, had practiced the religion of the popes in Rome. But during the Reformation, Protestants took control of Amsterdam. Catholics had to worship out of sight. In 1663, the wealthy merchant who owned this home converted an upper floor into a Catholic church, complete with balconies and an elaborate Baroque altar. Imagine the jubilation when things changed and Catholics could finally gather together and worship in public without feeling like two-bit criminals. The Old Church, or Odekirk. As the name implies, this was the medieval city's original church. Returning from a long sea voyage, sailors of yore would spy the steeple of the old church on the horizon and know they were home. Having returned safely, they'd come here to give thanks to St. Nicholas, the patron saint of this church 
of seafarers, of Christmas, and of the city of Amsterdam. The church was begun about 1300. Construction continued in fits and starts for the next 300 years, as is apparent in the building's many gangly parts. Then in the 15th century, Amsterdam built the Nieuwe Kerk, or New Church, on Dom Square. But the old church still had the tallest spire, the biggest organ, the most side altars, and remained the city's center of activity, bustling both inside and out with merchants and street markets. ¶¶ 